Hi everyone, this is Amanda McWirt at the University of Arkansas. Today I'm going to talk about different types of propagation material that growers will use to establish their plantings in the fall, and then also about the importance of selecting a planting date in order to maximize production for southeastern strawberry production. I do want to acknowledge um, to some of the other specialists from around the region that helped contribute to this presentation. So Mary Helen Ferguson from the LSU Ag Center, Jayesh Samtani from Virginia Tech, Mark Hoffman from NC State and Edgar Vinson from Arbor, Auburn University all uh, contributed some information specific to their different regions. And I want to acknowledge those contributions. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So first off, what are the two main types of plants that growers will use to establish their plantings? They're really broken up into either bare root types and plugs. Um, and I want to go through and just talk about some of the pros and cons of each of these and when growers might use one versus the other. And then I'll move in and talk about the specifics of how each one of these different plant types is established. So the first type is what we would call our bare roots. Uh, and you can see a picture here of what a bare root plant looks like. You can see that it has some roots attached to it, but the roots are kind of appear somewhat dormant. They're not really actively growing. And the, the plant typically does not have very much foliage. And, and usually that foliage is mowed off before the plants are shipped. One advantage of using bare roots is, is that they tend to be cheaper. And so that's one reason why growers are sometimes interested in them. But it's important to realize that the establishment of bare root plants can be a little bit more complicated. And in some cases, it's better for growers who are just starting out to not try bare roots and use plugs instead. One of that reasons is, is because these plants are somewhat dormant, they don't have any actively growing foliage. Um, when the plants are first put into the ground, they actually require continuous overhead irrigation for about one to two weeks in order for that plant to start to root in and send up some new uh, foliage. So it requires quite a bit of water and a, a lot of management and having the equipment to do overhead irrigation. They can also, because they have these long roots that are attached, to be careful about how we put them into the ground and make sure that those roots are going straight down into the ground. And so they are a little bit more difficult to plant as well. Bare root plants typically start to be available for us in the southeast sometime around late September. But an advantage of using bare roots, and one reason why a lot of growers like these plants, is because they do tend to have a little bit more spread out season where there's not a really pronounced harvest peak uh, in the middle of the season. I should mention there's a lot of different names for um, different bare root plant types. Um, another one that you may hear sometimes is cutoffs, and they're pretty similar to bare roots um, in a lot of ways. Um, they're generally available in October for us in the southeast, and something that's unique about them is that they will have accumulated a little bit of chilling hours prior to shipping. The second plant type are what we call plugs, and a plug is essentially just a runner tip that has been rooted into a cell tray uh, and has actively growing roots and actively growing foliage. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive, but because the plant is actively growing, um, they can be just pushed into the ground uh, and established with drip irrigation. Um, and so they're a little bit easier to establish that way because there's no extra equipment like overhead irrigation required that you would need for like your bare roots. Plugs can also be transplanted using a water wheel transplanter and they tend to have a little bit wider availability. So they can be available as early as August and all the way through October. A possible disadvantage of plugs in some cases is that the season tends to be more pronounced. So I have a more pronounced harvest peak. Um, instead of having a more flat, even season of production. So what does it look like when we want to try and establish these two different plant types? On the left hand side, um, you'll see uh, some images about how to transplant bare roots or cutoffs. And then on the right hand side, you'll see some images about how to transplant or establish plugs. And the big thing with either plant type is that we want to be really aware of the depth of the placement of the crown. We don't want the crown of the plant to be placed too high so that it can be damaged when the plant is blown around with wind. And we also don't want to bury the crown so that essentially we kind of arrest the plant development and the plant's not going to establish well. So so first, let's talk about bare roots and cutoffs. Um, and you can see in these different pictures on the far left hand side that what we want to do is get that crown right level with the soil line. All the roots are going straight down into the soil. On the next image over, you can see that the plant is planted a little too shallow and the crown is actually above ground and you see some of the roots sticking out. That's what we don't want to do. And we also don't want to put the crown too deep like we see in the, the following image. 
And one of the reasons why I said previously that bare roots are a little bit more difficult to establish is because they have those long roots that we do want to try and push down into the ground um, and make sure that the roots are going straight down and not J-rooted or, or going in at an angle. So that final image that you see where, where it's labeled as J-rooted, that can sometimes happen when we're trying to push those roots down into the soil and they don't get pushed down all of the way um, straight. And there's some different tools that growers will use uh, to try and make sure that the roots go down straight uh, as possible. With plugs, very similar story, but because plugs have already been, already have soil around them, sometimes they're a little easier to tell where that crown should be placed. Um, and essentially what we want to do is make sure that the top of the plug is somewhat uh, in line with the top of the soil. Kind of like what you see in that middle image where it's labeled as correct. One thing I, I like to point out is, is that really what we would like to do is place that plug right there at the soil level, but put a, just a little bit of the native soil on top of the plug. That really helps kind of keep moisture inside of the plug and make sure that the plug's not acting as a wick that's pulling water out of the soil uh, and that plant's going to dehydrate pretty quickly. So in either case, transplanting uh, and spending some time to make sure that all the plants are set correctly is really going to go a long way to making sure that the crop establishes well in the fall. And that's going to lead us into here in a second the idea of choosing our planting date because planting date and making sure that the plants are being set correctly when they are planted really does have a big impact on the success of the crop the following spring. So one question you may be thinking is, okay, so now where can I find these different plants? I would direct you to your local extension office to inquire about what nurseries supply plants to your area, because this tends to be somewhat of a regional uh, differences in what suppliers are, are providing plants in different parts of the southeast. But I will give you some tips and some other things to think about once you've identified some nurseries that you might be able to buy plants from. A major issue that we have in strawberry production in the southeast is uh, plants coming in with disease, um, and it's a, an issue for, for the industry across the entire United States. But making sure that you're finding a nursery that is going to be able to do its best to supply you plants that are disease um, and pest free is going to go a long way to ensuring that you're having optimum establishment in the fall and going to maximize yield and fruit quality in the following season, so in the spring. Anthracnose in particular is a major issue that we see of, uh, coming in on plants, something to be aware of. So that being said, we always encourage growers, make sure that you're buying the highest quality plants that you can find. And even though this is an annual crop, the investment in higher quality plants is worthwhile. Uh, in terms of the payoff for better establishment and yields the following season. All right, so now let's move on and talk about how to choose when to establish our strawberries in the fall. All right, so the reason why we're focusing on planting date selection here today is because we know that the timing of plant establishment in the fall can actually have a really big impact on yield and fruit size for strawberries in the following spring. One of the reasons that planting date can have, have this impact is because what we really want to see in plasticulture strawberries uh, in the southeast is that we're going to plant those plants uh, in the fall, and then they're going to start to develop these branch crowns. And each additional branch crown is then going to be able to produce additional flowers that are then going to turn into more fruit. So we want to optimize the number of branch crowns per plant so that we have optimum yields per plant and also optimum fruit size. We can actually plant the plants too early in the fall where we're allowing them too much time to develop these branch crowns. And we can actually get excessive branch crown development that then results in reduced fruit size. So kind of in an idealized situation, we're going to plant these plants that come in as generally a single crown plant, whether it's a bare root or a plug. We're going to establish those in the fall. They're going to start to develop those branch crowns through the fall and into the winter. And generally in the middle of winter, what we would like to see is that each plant has developed one to two additional branch crowns per plant. That then by spring will result uh, in plants that have somewhere between four to six crowns per plant uh, at the time of flowering. That four to six crown uh, is sort of a generalized recommendation for most cultivars. So what limits uh, the plant's ability to develop these branch crowns in the fall? There's really two kind of limitations to crop establishment in the fall for us here in the southeast, and those are light and temperature. For light, we know that each day uh, as we move forward in the fall, the day length is getting progressively shorter. That means that there's uh, less daylight out there for the plants to respond to and grow. Uh, you know, in the case of June bearing strawberries, this is actually something we want to see because we know that those shortening day lengths actually help initiate flowers down in the crown for strawberries. But there's a certain limitation where the days can actually get so short that the plants kind of slow down and become somewhat dormant as well. 
But the bigger limiting thing for us is temperature. You know, as temperatures start to get cooler and we start to get several freezes, that starts to initiate in the plant that the plant should go dormant. So we really want to allow uh, enough time for the plant to get established and start to develop some of these branch crowns before we have a lot of cool weather that's then going to initiate the plant to be dormant. And of course, if you look at this graph here, you can see that there's a really big range in when we have our first average frost uh, across the southeast. And so that's going to mean that there's going to be different recommendations for when strawberries should be established so that we're allowing enough time for the plants to start to do their development and start to develop these branch crowns um, before uh, the temperatures get too cool and before the day length is too short. I'm going to go through and talk about recommendations for planting date for um, different states here in a second, but I do just want to emphasize that, you know, planting date, um, you know, differences in planting date of even a, a week can have a really big impact on crop establishment in the fall. Here in Arkansas, we've been doing several studies on different planting dates and how to manage crops that have been planted late to try and maximize their production. So I just want to show you kind of an example of some things that we have seen. So here's a picture of an on-time planting. On the left-hand side, this uh, planting was planted around late September, early October in Arkansas. And then on the right-hand side, you see the exact same cultivar planted just seven to 10 days later. These pictures were taken uh, in December as the plants are you know, heading into winter. Uh, I will say that and this year we did have some anthracnose move in on the plants or anthracnose on the plants as they came in. So the plants were already kind of smaller and didn't establish as readily in the fall. So even in the on-time planting that you see on the left, those plants are smaller than what we would really like to see. But on average, we're seeing, you know, one to two uh, crowns per plant, and maybe in some cases, a few plants that have three crowns per plant. Versus on the right-hand side, um, those were plants that were just delayed about seven to 10 days. And on average, you know, a lot of those plants have still only a single crown per plant. And so it's important to realize that, you know, a, a weak difference in planting date can have a pretty big impact on crop establishment in the fall. First, let's talk about recommendations for Arkansas. Because there's such big differences um, between the northern part of the state and the southern part of the state for us in Arkansas, we do have pretty drastic differences and we would recommend uh, things be planted. In the northern part of the state, we recommend uh, strawberries be planted sometime before September 25th. In the central part of the state, we recommend um, strawberries be established before October 1st. And then in the southern part, before October 5th. I will say that, you know, in certain parts of Arkansas, we can have pretty dramatic differences in elevation. So for some growers who may be in the central part of the state or the northern part of the state that are at high elevation, they may actually want to plant even a little bit earlier because those high elevation areas do stay cooler in the fall and that can slow a crop establishment as well. Most of our growers use plug plants, but we do have a, a few growers who are using cutoffs and bare roots um, and are generally more constricted and when they're able to plant based off of when they receive their plants. And so we, for those growers, we recommend they plant as early in October as they're able to for when the plants come in. Of course, there can be some differences for different cultivars and, and we're still continuing to experiment with that as well as our growers are, but some growers are realizing that they need to prioritize certain cultivars for earlier planting. But of course, I always caution growers against planting too early because excessive crown development does result in small fruit size, as we mentioned before. Dr. Mark Hoffman at North Carolina State University sent us these recommendations. Again, you know, across the state of North Carolina, they have really big differences in topography and elevation. And so they have rec different recommendations for planting there as well. Um, Mark recommends that these planting recommendations are for Chandler and Camarosa, and he does uh, recommend to irrigate after transplanting, of course, to make sure that we maximize uh, crop establishment. He also comments that bare roots or cutoffs uh, should be planted three to five days earlier than plug plants. So in the mountains, he recommends uh, the first week of September uh, planting strawberries versus the third week of September in the foothills. Uh, or the fourth week in the upper Piedmont and Tidewater. Then sort of as we transition further east and south, the lower Piedmont and coastal plains, he recommends the first week of October and then out on the coast, the second week of October. J.S. Samtani at Virginia Tech recommended strawberries be established in early September for the mountainous part of Virginia, uh, mid-September for the upper Piedmont and northern Virginia. And then as we move out to the southeastern part of the state and the coastal area, he recommended late September to the first week in October. Dr. Mary Helen Ferguson at LSU emphasized that, you know, a lot of strawberry production goes on in Louisiana in two parishes, uh, kind of in the southeastern corner of the state. And for that region, their recommendations are that bare root plants be planted from October through early November, 
and plugs be planted in late September for early production. And then finally, Edgar Vinson from Auburn recommended that for majority of Alabama, growers plant somewhere between October 1st and 15th. But for growers in the northern part of the state of Alabama, they should be planting closer to October 1st. So, again, I just want to comment that we've done some work on this here in Arkansas, and there's also been other work done in other parts of the uh, region as well looking at the impact of planting late uh, on strawberry yields. And one of our interests is, is that we know, you know, sometimes things happen in the fall where, you know, either we have some um, tropical weather hurricanes move through that result in delays of planting or our propagation material comes in late and that can result in delays of planting. And so our interest was, um, can we use a, a one ounce row cover um, applied to these late plantings to try and catch up uh, on some of that lost temperature to our on-time planting. Of course, we can't make up for those losses in day length, but perhaps with a row cover, we can try and keep the plants a little bit warmer and, and continuing to establish for later into the fall. Basically, what we've seen is that, um, you know, there's a very consistent yield loss um, associated with planting late, but that yield loss tends to be less dramatic in a year with a long or a warm long fall season. And that the impact of, of late planting does vary by cultivar. So here are some just some general, very preliminary data that we have from here in Arkansas on the average percent yield loss from planting seven to 10 days late for different cultivars and still applying that row cover uh, relative to an on-time planting. So for Camino Real, we've seen that there's been about a 12% yield reduction to a late planting, even if you're still using that, that row cover. For Chandler, we see about an 18% reduction for Fronteras, around a 17% reduction. And then for some cultivars, the, the reduction in percent yield loss can be quite uh, dramatic. For Ruby June last year, we saw that there was a 30% reduction in uh, yield on a late planting. And for Radiance, there was a 49% yield reduction. Just to kind of show you what that means in terms of actual yield loss across the entire field, I do have this other chart here down in the bottom right-hand corner. This was some data from a, a previous trial. We were planting on time on September 30th versus a late planting on October 8th. And these are the differences in yield per plant between the late planting date and the on time. And then that number actually extrapolated out to yield difference per 15,000 plants per acre. So you can see that equates to around 2,700 pounds of yield loss for Camino Real and Chandler versus, you know, 4,800 to 5,500 uh, pounds per acre yield loss for things like Radiance and Ruby June. Again, these are estimates and, and things can vary across region and, and management. But it does bring up the question of, okay, something happened and now I have to plant late. What can I do to try and maximize crop establishment in the fall uh, in that scenario? Based off of our research, we do recommend to our growers to apply one ounce row cover uh, once daily temperatures are hitting around 65 degrees Fahrenheit um, as, as kind of the daily average high. For us, that usually occurs somewhere around three to four weeks after planting in late October, early November. We do recommend that growers wait to try and apply those row covers until the plants have rooted in and established a little bit because windy conditions can cause row covers to beat against the plants and the plastic and can beat up those young transplants. And they also block a little bit of light as well. And it's also important to keep in mind that, you know, that row cover, while it's keeping the plant warmer at night, it's also keeping it much warmer during the day, particularly on really sunny days. Uh, and early in the season, we can still have pretty warm temperatures in some cases, and that row cover can make that temperature, that air temperature, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit even warmer around those plants. We do recommend to our growers that you, they leave on those row covers for just a period of about three, four, maybe five weeks, and then remove them in early December to allow the plants to acclimate to cool temperatures and proceed um, with going dormant. Our research has shown that in a year when it does get cool right after planting, applying a row cover like this, a one ounce row cover uh, following these recommendations can increase yield and plant development for late plantings, but it's generally not going to catch up to yielding the same as an on-time planting. And that makes sense because we're able to moderate the temperature, but we're not able to moderate those losses in day length. So we recommend you think about uh, selecting your planting date and your planting material carefully in order to optimize crop production for southeastern plasticulture strawberry production. Thanks so much for joining us.